When I got my Symmetricom 8040 rubidium frequency standard earlier this year, I calibrated my HP 5350B microwave frequency counter against it. Now, nine months later, I'm actually curious to see how much the oven controlled crystal oscillator inside the HP 5350B had drifted. Also, I have not calibrated my Recodana 1992 frequency counter after I fixed it a while back, so I'm going to calibrate that in this video as well. I will also include the videos for the Rubidium standard teardown and the Recodana frequency counter repair towards the end of this video. So for hobbyists, most of the test gears we buy are used and are long out of service. A natural question surfaces from time to time again is whether a particular piece that was calibrated years ago is still accurate. Well, generally speaking, you do need routine calibration done to be absolutely certain that the equipment you're using still meets the specifications. This is obvious, especially you are in the test and measurement business. But for hobbyists, most simply just need to have a comfort level, knowing that the equipment remains close to spec when calibration has not been done for long periods of time. And for crystal oscillators and voltage references, their performance tend to stabilize over years. So there's a good chance that these components will still be very close to spec after they have last been calibrated. So now I just uh, connected the rubidium frequency cell output to the HP 5350B microwave frequency counter and we'll see what the readings are. Actually, I haven't checked it since I last calibrated back in March. And the result is still 10 megahertz, which is actually not surprising because as well I'll show you in the uh, data sheet, you will see that the drift for the uh, crystal is only rated at uh, 10 to the minus uh, uh, 8, uh, sorry, this is for option 001 is 10 to the minus 10. So which means that uh, we are only here be able to detect minus uh, 6. And uh, so anywhere when it uh, drifted within that margin, you won't be able to detect. So that's why we're still seeing uh, 10 megahertz spot on. So nevertheless, this shows you that once you calibrated this uh, OCXO, you really don't probably need to calibrate it again for a long period of time, especially for hobby use. And the same is true for uh, voltage references as I uh, last time when I did the te teardown of the DC standard I have here, the MV216A up here, and uh, I actually showed you the uh, voltages, still very, very close to the spec output voltages of this instrument. And before I forget, let's also check the frequency readings in the high resolution mode. The HP 5350B has a high resolution mode and depending on the frequency range, you can get up to 1 millihertz of resolution. And for the 10 megahertz frequency that we're measuring right now, the high resolution mode can give you one extra digit of resolution. So let's take a look here. And now I just turned on the high resolution mode and we can see that we're reading 10 megahertz. So we know that any drift that happened since our last calibration must be well within the 50 millihertz range as we simply don't have enough resolution here to display that at that accuracy level. This again is not surprising as the OCXO's long-term accuracy and stability is at least a couple of magnitudes better than what we're able to measure here with the HP 5350B. And by the way, most of the uh, equipments here in the lab that are using the ovenized crystal oscillator are actually left on all the time because 
the oven needs uh, time to reach their operating temperature and stabilize. In fact, for most of the uh, calibration procedures, you are required to have the oven on for at least uh, 12 to 24 hours prior to calibration. Some of the uh, calibration manual I have seen even require you to leave them on for days before you can do the calibration. And that shouldn't be a problem because uh, uh, in the lab you typically just leave it on and once they reach their operating temperature they don't really consume that much power. And so because the last time I did not get a chance to calibrate this uh, frequency counter because the record data, uh, if I remember correctly, last time when I assembled it back together, it looks very close to the uh, 10 megahertz reading. And so I did not do anything, but this time since I uh, had it out again, and I'm going to adjust it to uh, the exact 10 megahertz. And also this frequency counter has a little bit of higher resolution than the HP 5350B that I showed you earlier. It can, um, I think it has a up to one millihertz resolution. So we'll see that in a bit. Nevertheless, I had left this power down for quite some time, so the oven has already got a chance to stabilize. So now let's put in the cerubidium frequencies output, 10 megahertz, into the input to see what we got. Actually, this is uh, not uh, that far off. Even though it's showing uh, 17 at the end, it's actually one, only 1 hertz, uh, 1.7 hertz off. But nevertheless, because we're you know, doing the uh, calibration. So I'm just going to adjust it uh, anyway. So let's uh, flip it over and uh, see where we can do the adjustment. And here's the back of the unit. And as you can see that we still have this calibration sticker on since it was calibrated last time, which was, uh, I think, more than 10 years ago. But uh, we're gonna peel this off and uh, to see if we can do finer adjustment to make it at least conforming to what our rubidium standard readout is. So let's uh, peel it off. And uh, and if I remember correctly, we need to remove one of the uh, screws to expose the actual calibration adjustment knob. So let me uh, and uh, you probably cannot see but inside this is actually a uh, a screw so that I can turn it gradually and I'm going to adjust that and we will uh, I will tell you what I've got after it's been calibrated. So it's actually very sensitive. So I think right now I got it to uh, be 10 megahertz spot on. So I will show you that after I flip it over. But now we can put this uh, screw back on. and uh, I'm going to flip it over, we'll see. And here's the result I got, and uh, as before we were about, we were actually two digits, which is about one hertz, uh, two hertz out. Right now, give or take, we're about uh, uh, 0.1 hertz, uh, the uncertainty, the last digit. Now, this particular counter, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 10 millihertz resolution, and we can further increase the resolution by one more digit, and see what exactly the last digit is. And you can see we're about uh, 0.03 hertz off. So that's actually a very small amount. And again, a little bit of variation to the last digit is somewhat to be expected. So let's uh, change it back to the uh, 
the reading that we can see the 10 megahertz. And so that's about what I wanted to cover for this video. And you can see that uh, uh, if you have a OCXO controlled uh, equipment, you can be rest assured that uh, once it's calibrated, it will last for a long period of time without worrying drifting too much out of the spec. And uh, and if you do get a chance to calibrate it, then you know you should be good for a long period afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you learn something new. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, do remember to check out my other videos as well. And also, as I mentioned earlier, I will include some of my earlier teardown videos in the uh, towards the end. And uh, so you can check them out as well. Again, thank you very much and I will catch up with you next time.